Tom and I make electronic music under the name Bamboo Leaves. If you're new here, this channel is for those of you that want to learn about making and releasing alternative electronic music. Think Deep House, Organica, Future Sounds, Down Tempo, that kind of thing. If that interests you, make sure to subscribe to this channel so that you can catch new videos as they come out. Today, we're going to be breaking down a track in the style of Lapalux. After making this track, I actually thought that it sounded quite similar to Flume's slower stuff, so I whacked that in the title as well. I'm really digging this deep, slow vibe with heavy use of side chaining and big sounding drums. If you like this video, leave a like and you can get that algorithm going to really help me out. With that out of the way, let's jump over to the DAW. Okay, let's play this track from start to finish. As usual, we'll start from the top and we'll work our way down to the bottom. First up, we've got Accords. So these are the main organ sounding chords that play through the whole track. Okay, giving that nice bass chord progression and keeping the track centered around it. For sound generation, I've used the Logic's Quick Sampler. So having it loaded with the default patch being the sine waves that are just automatically loaded in there. You can create some organ sounding chords out of that. So what I've done on top of this is I've changed the amp envelope. So I've got the attack that is coming in slowly instead of playing instantly. So that's why you kind of get that it leads into it a little bit and then I've also turned up the glide so when you go from one chord to the next it glides to it that's the only thing I've done for the sound generation section of this I've loaded a EQ on there and I've rolled off just those low ends so that I can kind of cut out any of those boomy sub frequencies that might get in the way in the mix. So another thing that I've done is I've bussed off some of that signal off to a bus and I've called that the widen bus. So on that bus, I've got a sample delay that is delaying the right hand signal by a small amount so that it has the sound playing fully wide in the stereo field. And I'm just putting a bit of this uh, sort of organ chord sound off to that so that I have the sound generation where it was. And then I've just put a little bit into this sort of widen bus. And that is just going to fill out the stereo field a little bit and make the chord sound bigger and sort of fill out the space because this is sort of the main driving chord behind the whole track. So if I feed in a little bit more of that signal, you can kind of hear it fill out the stereo field a bit. It's got a subtle effect, so it may need it, it may not need it, but I've left it in anyway. Moving on, I've got this bass synth, so let's have a listen. Cool, so a really like bassy, thick, kind of crunchy, gritty sounding bass synth. I quite like this one. So for sound generation of that one, I've used Logic's Retro Synth. It's just got the default uh, wave generation on the shape one and shape two and evenly mixed in. I've got the filter sort of set pretty much where it was a default, I think. And I've just messed around with the filter envelope so that it kind of opens and closes with like an attack and decay, much like a plucky sort of slow pluck bass might do. And I've kind of got a similar feel for the amp envelope. To ensure that an amount of the envelope is affecting that filter cutoff, I've got that envelope put up to 0 
uh, fed into that filter. And to give that really subby bassy note, I've got the sine wave level turned up to 0.79. So I'm bringing a sine wave in there to thicken up that low end on top of those filtered saw waves that you're getting. Right, next synth we've got is this synth wob. So this comes in in the second half of the track. Yeah, so that like wobby LFO cutoff filter, it comes in uh, later in the track and it's a little bit quiet and you can kind of just hear it and then it gets a bit louder and it's sort of like a nice, interesting element to the track to keep the listener interested. So for sound generation, retro synth again, I've messed around with the filter envelope and the amp envelope so it fades in nice and slowly so it opens up that filter really slowly over the course of its envelope but on top of that i've got the lfo down here sync turned to uh, 1 over 16 t so triplets i've then got uh, that fed into the cutoff filter so that lfo is making the filter open and close very quickly so that's where you're getting that wobby sound from so with none of it it sounds like this and then with it fed in it starts to sound like this And the way that it sort of slowly dies off after the notes have stopped playing, that's because on the amp envelope I've got a release set to 1400 milliseconds. So that releases and sort of fades away slowly. So on top of that, what I've got is this tremolo from Logic that is moving that sound to the left and the right. So it's swaying along with the listener in their head and it's kind of keeping it interesting and keeping that stereo field engaged. And then on top of that, I've put on this bandpass EQ filter that is kind of boxing those frequencies in. On top of that, I've got a portion of that signal bust off to a hall reverb. So that's where you're getting that big hall reverb sound from that adds to the tail of this sound. Next up, let's listen to the vocal chops. I took some vocal sample, so let me play it for you. We don't have to talk. So I then sort of chose an appropriate place to cut it off, and then I just used the MIDI keys to pitch the sound around and to kind of make it sound interesting and a bit lapaluxy, a little bit flumey. I added on top of it a echo, so just a delay, 16 dotted, and then I've also bust that off to the Valhalla Vintage Verb for the whole reverb sound. So the kind of the key in getting this sound is to choosing where to put your MIDI note so that it pitches it around, slows and stretches out some of that sample, and then has like a the occasional sort of hit on one of the higher register bits to make it sound interesting and pitched around just like this. and also making sure that it's in key with the rest of the track. So for these instrumental parts of the track, I bust all of those to a single bus to do some group processing on it. So that group processing is just an LFO tool that is just doing the side chaining with the kick. So just on every bar, it will just do one really big, slow kind of side chain that brings the level down leaves room for this really boomy kick and then returns to it. So it's just like ducking, ducking nice and slowly to give that really laid back, big, slow, pumping feel. Okay, up next, we've got some sort of percussive effects pieces. So I just dragged in a chime sample that kind of plays at the start of the track and gives this really sort of glittery, nice, a little bit worldly sound to it. So it's just this. Nothing special. 
And to complement that, I've also got this bell sound. I've got an echo that's doing that and I've got it bust off to the reverb as well, just a little bit, and then rolling off some of those extreme highs that were probably a bit too harsh for me. So those together, it sounds like this. Now we've got the drums, so I'll play all the drums together and then we'll break them down one by one. So let's start off with the two kicks. The first kick, I'm using Logic's drum synth. So it's not a sample, it's a synthesizer that is used to emulate kick drums. So let's have a listen to some of those. So it's like that 808 sound, but if you get it in the low registers, that big boomy sound. I used, I think, one of the presets that's just got some heavy kick. And then I dialed in these different parameters to make sure that the shape of it was sort of long, but not too long. And it had like a, a reasonable amount of click at the start and it decays off at the rate that I wanted it to and that fit into the track. But that deep subby 808 sound combined with the side chaining gives like a really big deep sound to it. So if I play the instrumental parts to it that have that side chain along with the kick, it's like. Yes, I. And the side chaining helps everything get out of the way for that 808. And it just kind of slowly comes back in and gives a good pump to the sound. I've also got a kick sample that plays um, sort of on some of those kicks and sometimes in between them as well. Really kind of dead, not very loud, and it's just to give a little bit more thump to that 808 kick. It doesn't add too much, but I thought it needed a little bit more power on that transient at the start. Okay, next up, we'll look at the snares. So like that flam kind of sound. It'll just be some percussion that I've got two different samples for. The first one out of the two sounds like this. So that's like a deeper sound. And then I've also got this other one in there that sounds like this. And for that second one, I use a sample delay to push the signal out really wide so you have the one deeper sound in the middle and you have the higher sound that's pushed out to the sides and combined together you get like a good filling out of the frequency spectrum and of the stereo field and because the transients hit at different points you get that sort of flam sound on top of those i've also bust it off to a room Valhalla Vintage Verb, so I've got a second reverb on there, which is a rum sound, and then I've also bust it off to the Valhalla Vintage Verb, that's a concert hall. So now we're getting into the sort of the little percussive parts that are in there that just sort of keep it interesting and keep a bit of swing to it. So I only actually seem to use it, just uh, this sound, which is a click, so it's just like finger clicks. I only seem to use it there once and it's just there on one of the off beats to accent the sort of the swing on there. These other clicks, so let's listen to those. So that's a kind of clicky percussive sound that I've pitched. The first one is pitched just normally and the second one, I've transposed that down by five semitones. So that's why you're getting that sound from. I put that to the room reverb and also the hall reverb as well. A big part of this Lapalux sound I'm getting is that things aren't exactly on the beat and they've got a humanized feel to them. They're kind of natural sounding and it's like a bit swinging, that hip hop vibe to it. Okay, right, moving on, I've got these toms. It's just three different tom samples, regular drum kit kind of sounds, good on off beats and just before other hits so that you kind of get that 
swinging, rolling feel. Those are bussed off to the room reverb, so it kind of fits into a similar space as other parts of this track. After I put this in, uh, these toms in, that's where I started getting a bit more of that flume sound from some of his earlier slower tracks where he has those big tom drums from drum kits mixed in there with his electronic stuff and that's why I've kind of got that focus in this video as well. And then I've got this shaker at the end. That there is a shaker sound. Yeah, that's just dragged into the quick sampler. I put a bit of a fade on there to make sure there's no click at the start and to give it a softer transient. And then I've just drawn in. So I used the um, I used a drum pad or like a keyboard to draw in these MIDI notes to have that sort of swing late feel and it's you know nowhere near being on the beat like none of those would be on well okay occasionally one of them hits onto the bar but it's pretty much free form and i've got it so that it goes from a higher one to a lower one so it's and i just played that in and i kind of knew the feel i wanted it to be i wanted it to be just after the drum hits and then i moved some of those midi notes to kind of get that full sound so you might be able to hear that if i play it along with the rest of the drums so i think that's an important part of this sort of slow human hip-hop laid back sound is kind of getting that swing and the human feel i'm definitely getting that one in there with this shaker on top of it i'll just play all of that together and you can hear all of it playing as one Thank you for watching to the end of this video. You got any questions about any of that? Leave it in the comments below and I'll get around to answering them. Once again, if you like this video, leave a like and subscribe to this channel so that you can catch more videos just like this as they come out. Other than that, I'll catch you in the next one.